The weather outside is frightful and very few things in the crypto market are delightful because it is apparently crypto winter, although there's much debate as to whether that is the case or not. Something I will be discussing with one of our now fan favorite regular guests, Sir Mark Sof from Bullish. Now, there's a great thread from Tom Levero, who used to be a board member of Coinbase, describing why he believes it's crypto winter, but there are reasons for some optimism and hope. We're going to discuss all that as well as news, maybe some charts, although there's very little to see on the charts right now in just a minute. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I am Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and take those winter icicles and stab the like button with them. If it is indeed crypto winter, you got to stab the like button with your icicles. But as I said, there's been much debate as to that. Before we get started, though, of course, check out Bullish right down below. Right down below. The best, the best combination of everything you could ever want from either a decentralized or centralized exchange. All in one place, all in one place with extremely high liquidity. Of course, we have Surin here today who can talk about that liquidity and what they're seeing in the market. It's been very, very helpful on a regular basis to have him here to sort of give us a pulse of what's happening, certainly with the institutions, institutional adoption, volume, and liquidity uh, on their exchange. So guys, definitely check them out. Do me a favor, click on that link down below. You'll make me look really good. And I like, I like looking good. So listen, guys, as I said, there's been much debate as to whether it is, in fact, crypto winter or not. Now, if you look back, we've basically had one good month in roughly 14 months, right? October was spectacular. Everyone's portfolios went absolutely nuts. Bitcoin went up. All coins outperformed. Broke 65,000 all-time high to 69,000. It's been nothing but down since. And the entire summer before that had been nothing but down since May. So some would argue that it's just kind of been crypto winter for a really long time and that maybe we were front running other markets that were later to react to what was coming, which seems to be a bit of a liquidity crisis across all markets. Now, there's a great thread here right before I bring Surin on uh, that I wanted to show you guys. This was from Tom Lever. He, he was a board member uh, at Coinbase and he led their Series D for IVP. Basically, he makes the argument here that crypto winter has just started. Now, his argument is based sort of on the halving cycles and how long generally we see from peak to trough of the market. He says it's about 12 months. He's calling the peak November 21st. So saying that we would sort of see us starting to come out of it November again in 2022, basically a year later. But he really doesn't see much bullishness until the end of 2023. And here he says the bottom will not come during this current fear and loathing phase, but later after indifferent sense in. Crypto is no longer making headlines and the tourists have left. That process will take many months. Human psychology will influence this timeline. Now, I don't necessarily agree, but he does make a case that's based on sort of historical precedence. Of course, there's the famous rainbow chart. I put all of this in today's newsletter, by the way. Uh, the famous rainbow chart, which has sort of never been wrong, as they like to say with any model, they're all uh, never wrong until they're wrong, of course, right? But as you can see on this one, it's never been wrong except for the times when it was. <laughs> obviously we have these uh, deviations above it but never has it really broken down except for slightly here uh in 2020 right and so we're testing the very bottom of this is a very famous model we know that all of these models are just predictive but if you're looking at the halvings and sort of the cycles you can see that we're halfway to the next halving basically and at the bottom of that rainbow just a chart as i said i want to bring on uh Surin, who you guys obviously know at this point, I would imagine by now. How are you, man? How's it going today? Good, good. Uh, uh, weathering the, the winter, or what some say might be the winter. <laughs> okay, so what are your thoughts on that? Because I know that from what you're seeing, which is, I don't know, actually based on data, <laughs> uh, you don't think they necessarily win a crypto winter, right? Um, not necessarily, partly uh, because of just uh, the way the charts look to me that... Uh, uh, we did bounce off of that uh, uh, 17.5K level uh, uh, about two weeks ago on the, on the 18th. And um, uh, it's been sort of meandering uh, in a range since then. Uh, so uh, if I had to uh, put my take on it, it's uh, 
the market is trying to make up its mind still. Uh, both the fiat market, uh, S and P, is still also bouncing uh, around above 3,800 levels, although it's flirting with 3,800 again, uh, which uh, you know happens to be a second Fibonacci retracement of the big bull uh, move back from 2000. Nine and so, so to me, that's an important level, and it, it, it's above it right now. So that's a positive sign. Um, another uh, positive sign is we're still above twenty, although barely by uh, with just a few dollars. Uh, 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 on the volume side, volumes have been declining in the last couple of weeks, uh, nice. uh, uh, as has the volatility. Uh, uh, even uh, at the sell-off uh, of June eighteenth. Uh, the volumes were not as high as in the previous week's sell-off. So even that, uh, it wasn't a kind of a massive capitulation event volume-wise. Um, uh, so the markets are still orderly in that sense, although low volume. Uh, liquidity, as in order book liquidity, as in market depth, um, has stayed more or less constant throughout uh, the last two weeks. Uh, it has declined a little bit for, BT for uh, Bitcoin pairs, uh, about 10%, uh, especially in the USD pairs. It, it has not declined in the Tether pairs, but, uh, but in the USD pairs, uh, it has uh, declined a little bit. It rose slightly for ETH pairs, interestingly enough. Uh, 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 and I'm talking here in base currency terms, uh, it, although the prices it didn't really move. So in dollar terms, it would be the same. Um, uh, the bid depth, uh, looking for positive signs, the bid depth is slightly higher than the ask depth uh, for Bitcoin at the 2% level. Uh, which You're is, saying that uh, theoretically there are more buyers in this area than sellers, or at least stacked more on the buy side. Correct, correct. So people look at something like uh, bid depth as a percentage of total depth at a given, usually like a plus minus 2% level. And right now it's running at about 60%. So it's slightly positive, slightly bullish sign. Uh, not so much for ETH. It's pretty neutral, like bid depth is exactly equal to ask depth uh, for ETH. So, uh, so some positive signs there, not overwhelmingly positive, but, but still positive. Uh, uh, correlation to the equity market has been lower in the last two weeks. So it reached yeah. a peak uh, of about 80% versus NASDAQ, BTC to NASDAQ in May. And now it's running at about 0.6. So if this decorrelation- yeah, It's a significant drop actually. Yeah. It is, it is. It, it may not feel like it sometimes when you look at a short-term chart that it seems to still move in lockstep. But if you look at a 30-day rolling correlation, it's actually lower correlation that we've seen before, which can be a good sign uh, uh, that if the, equity market trades water, uh, for example, we might have a bit of a bounce, even if it's a technical bounce, uh, some might say, you know, that cat bounce, but still a bounce uh, in the near term uh, in Bitcoin. Um, so, um, that, and in crypto in general. So those are the kind of the positive signs I've, uh, I've seen, but in general, uh, lower volumes, lower volatility is typically a sign of kind of lack of conviction. So the market is still trying to make up its mind. I mean, it's also just summer, <laughs> you know, and I think we always see sort of decreasing volume during the summer. We certainly saw it uh, last year, but I definitely would like to note, you know, you said sort of, we hinted to the fact that you view it more as a crypto autumn than a crypto winter at the moment. Mm -hmm. What would, what would be the sort of technical signals or the signals on the side from volume and, and liquidity and such that would show you that we actually had entered what you would consider a winter? Um, sure. Uh, I guess uh, one of the signs uh, uh, from the liquidity side, if you see liquidity falling uh, dramatically uh, in in base currency terms, uh, uh, then you it would mean that people uh, are not willing to commit capital to making markets uh, in crypto, and so that can uh, produce in turn more volatile moves which could in turn cause liquidations, scare people. And so you might see a bit of chaos. So right now things are still pretty orderly. If, if things become disorderly, which you might uh, decline in liquidity might precipitate that, then uh, that could be a sign of uh, um, a, uh, you know, more downside potential. Right. That's sort uh, of what he was hinting at in this thread is when there's just very little interest and people certainly aren't talking about it and nobody's trading it. Right. You're not seeing that. Yeah. Not seeing that yet. Uh, not seeing that yet. Uh, uh, liquidity is still there. Uh, volumes decline a little uh, somewhat, but that's just because the price has been meandering. If uh, if the price starts making a move, uh, then volumes will come back, uh, obviously. Uh, but liquidity being stable is a good sign in my mind. Um, it, go it, yep. Sorry, go ahead. No, please. 
Um, no, just one interesting uh, thing is on our exchange, just the way things work, uh, because we are an automated market maker uh, uh, embedded into a centralized exchange. Actually, uh, when the market goes down, liquidity increases on our exchange. Uh, uh, that's just an artifact of, uh, of uh, automated market makers, because in Bitcoin terms, the liquidity pool actually grows. Uh, and so that increases the depth. So if you see liquidity declining uh, on other uh, mar markets uh, I I as a result of a price downturn, you can almost guarantee that an R exchange will actually increase because it's mathematically determined rather than driven by the animal spirits. So <laughs> I love that. So would it be fair to say that if the next move is up or the next move is down, dependent on how much volume comes with that move would really give us a very good idea of what the next trend may be? Yes, yes. You would say, I mean, kind of in general and technical analysis, people would say that you look for volume to confirm the price direction and uh, uh, crypto is no exception. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So are you looking, I mean, you're seeing this sort of reducing correlation with the NASDAQ, which is nice to see, even though, like you said, it's kind of hard to determine on a day to day basis. Mm. Are there any particular catalysts that you're looking for that might sort of change that trend or send us in either direction? Um, I, I guess uh, it, it's um, uh, it depends on uh, what uh, what drives the crypto sentiment right now. To the extent that uh, if uh, if people are focused on the interest rates uh, and the, and the kind of the economic macro factors, that will probably drive the correlation higher. Whereas if people are focused more on crypto specific events like funds and uh, exchanges having trouble, counterparty risk, uh, uh, then that would uh, drive the correlation lower. So in a way, it depends on whether the, the next news, the next big shock will be crypto specific or driven by, by the outside world, by you know, the macro economy. Uh, so the, the nature of the news will drive the correlation higher or lower. That, that makes perfect sense. I mean, right now it feels like we just have this sort of <laughs> leaking contagion within the crypto market itself and we're sort of just waiting for the next domino or being the next exchange or platform or hero of ours from the past to just sort of fall and, and become a liquid, right? That sort of seems to be the narrative here that could, uh, unfortunately, you talk about reducing our correlation. That could be because bad things are happening in crypto that aren't happening elsewhere this time. That's true. That's true. It's a possibility or bad or just uncertain. Like right now, uh, I guess uh, July 6th is the date for uh, the uh, great, uh, yeah, for the ETF. And so uh, that can drive uh, correlation lower because it's a crypto specific event. Um, and in fact, partly it's already because markets anticipate it may be driving this correlation lower already because of people's anticipation. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Well, thank you, sir. And as always, for being an amazing guest and for uh, supporting things with data, because we always have all these narratives as to what's happening. And you can actually just tell us where the actual volume is and what's, and what's really happening under the hood. So I appreciate that very much. And I'm sure we'll see you, I don't know, next week, the week after. You're welcome anytime. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, guys, it's awesome. So it's always good, like I said, to sort of be able to put some actual uh, science and data behind the narratives that we're seeing on a regular basis. So I think sentiment wise, it is very clear that we are in a bit of a crypto winter here, right? As I said, and it has been for quite a while. We are seeing less positive news and all the news is seemingly bad. And I can tell you anecdotally that a hell of a lot of people who are particularly interested in crypto for a while are now not talking about it. I joked on Twitter that now I'm getting the uh, phone calls where people are like, hey, dude, so how about crypto? Like, because they're secret, they're checking in on you, but secretly they want to dunk on you and give you the I told you so. It's I told you so season without people actually saying I told you so. Maybe if we go down further, they'll actually call and just flat out say I told you so. But it's not that fun. Not that fun when the market is like this. Hopefully we can get some good catalysts. I think obviously if we saw inflation topping and actually start to come down for a month, if we saw this contagion, starting to reduce, that would certainly be nice. But let's dig in further here to the news. Blinding me with science. That's blinded me with science. That's a good one. You guys know that song, right? Everybody knows that song. She blinded me with science. There's a poetry emotion when she turns her eyes on me. Yeah. She blinded me with science. Science. Yes, yeah. know that song. I don't know why I just felt compelled to sing that. 
because I'm a child of the 80s, I guess. Bitcoin dips under 20K on blunted. Bitcoin smoke and blunts. Growth sentiment as Spain fuels inflation concerns. Yeah, if you guys saw this, probably. Spain, uh, inflation bigly out there, right? High inflation in Spain, no surprises there, but we're not really seeing that inflation top around the world that people are hoping for to sort of give a sign of reversal, meaning that central banks are more likely to continue to be hawkish and basically just be huge assholes. Now we have Bitcoin trading at 19930 ish Dollars as I'm speaking, I would show you a chart, but what is the point? All right, I showed you the rainbow chart. It's pretty, it's got colors, better colors even than my rainbow behind me, right? But like, what's the point of the charts right now? We know there's the 200 daily MA around 22,000. We know that we're trading right around that 20,000 ish support from the all time high of 2017. Otherwise, there's just nothing to see, man. You're wasting your time. Go get a job, get a hobby. Kiss a girl, kiss a boy. I don't know. There's girls here. There's boys here who kiss boys. There might be girls here who kiss girls. Katy Perry could be watching right now. You don't even know. You can't tell me she's not. But in the midst of all of this, uh, oh, bro, I thought you were going to get liquidated. As uh, Will Clemente said here, MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 480 Bitcoins for 10 million, an average price of 20,817 per Bitcoin as of 628. MicroStrategy holds 129,699 Bitcoin. Give me some of those. Acquired for $4 billion, basically 3.98. Average 30,664. So Michael Saylor was supposed to be getting liquidated at 21,000. Here he is buying at 20,800, like the Giga Chad, who he is. What do I owe you, bro? I didn't see. I don't see. I just saw the comment come across that I owe you something. I don't feel like I owe you anything. I don't feel like I owe you anything. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Anyways, I don't feel like I owe you anything. Could be wrong. Maybe I do. Who knows? Don't owe you anything, though. Definitely. Sorry, I'm trying to get my desk uh, organized here. So, yeah, micro strategy. Michael Saylor continuing to buy the dip, continuing to dollar cost average on a bigly scale. Massive dollar cost averaging here and continue to buy Bitcoin. I guess the narrative that he's getting liquidated is false. So now, guys, oh, saying hello, stonked up. Hi. Hi. Okay, so anyways, guys, now we go into the, uh, I don't know, bad news section, which is all the news. Um, here we have Compass Mining CEO and CFO resigned amid setbacks and disappointments. Funny, somebody reached out to me yesterday and said, Dude, you should probably not accept sponsorship from Compass Mining anymore. They're, you know, CEO. I know you're friends with Wit, which I am friendly with Wit. They're now ex CEO. Uh, and I had to point out, I don't have, I don't get paid by Compass Mining and they're not my sponsor. I literally just thought they're awesome and I'm a customer and shared it with everybody. So, uh, yeah, but I am still a customer. Personally, I can say that my, I haven't noticed anything, right? I'm not such like an active user. Like the Bitcoin continues to arrive in my account, continues to be mined on a daily basis. They had this FUD that one of their, uh, one of their mining rigs, one of their facilities was being shut down because they didn't pay their electric bill. They immediately proved that that was false. So yet again, we just have this sort of FUD storm going around it, but wit and the, uh, and the CFO have both now resigned and are being replaced. I don't really know what's going on there. I can only tell you what I'm seeing from the article, but I will be digging in way deeper into this to figure it out. I am still a customer there. Now, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. There's obviously some turmoil there, but no. Uh, and so I'm enjoying it, but it does seem like uh, this, yeah, miners are about to be liquidated. I think that we've seen a lot of miners already liquidated. Already liquidated. Yes, I do have a miner in Russia, as you pointed out there, which obviously went on offline because of sanctions. But it was my opinion from all of their updates, which I thought were very thorough, that they were handling that. So, yes, miners, uh, we're talking about minor capitulation here, right? I don't know if this is a symptom of something like that, but we are definitely, after talking to Peter Saddington yesterday, we can see that there's been massive liquidations. I saw Marathon, I believe, I read a whole story about it that I was not aware of, had this major weather event apparently months ago. Uh, at their main facility and has been offline. I didn't even know that. So there's a lot going on in the mining space, but it's way above my head. That's why I brought on a guest yesterday to, to discuss it. We might soon be at complete and utter capitulation. Now we build the real crypto future. Maybe, 
feels like there's been some capitulation. So Compass Mining, obviously, uh, going through it right now, but making changes to try to improve. I really like that. I'm in this place now, very strange, honestly. So where a lot of the platforms that I've trusted, I'm a customer of every single one. Like they're having leadership issues with people that I count as friends who I think are extremely smart and reliable. And so now it's sort of like that uh, time when you question, you know, how strong the industry is, how your own judgment on things that you've been using. I'm not questioning necessarily with Compass. We've talked about Voyager, obviously. Uh, it's a really tough time in this industry because some of the platforms that, that we thought were sort of either too big to fail or extremely consistent or behaving in a certain manner are also struggling. But a lot of that is because of these these guys, these guys right here, right? My God, three heirs capital. Liquidation ordered in British Virgin Islands. So we're doing that restructuring thing now with them where they're basically saying, uh, yeah, we uh, can't pay back any of our debts. We took a whole lot of loans. And now probably people are going to get paid back pennies on the dollar. Now, these guys, three arrows capital, one of the biggest funds are up to 10 billion assets under management at one point. And now apparently completely insolvent, which is just insane when you think about it. A lot of this obviously stems from Luna, but it seems like there was a lot more going on with them, right? They were massively exposed to Luna. Reports are they had about half a billion dollars in Luna, which was then worth, I don't know, $650, right? But then, of course, they apparently had a massive leverage long that they didn't tell any of their creditors about. Right, they're basically taking loans. Apparently, this is alleged, and lying to people about the status of their business. They didn't tell people they had a massive long that was going to get liquidated, which is that 400 million liquidations that we were talking about already back in mid June. So this is a pretty ugly scenario that's obviously causing contagion around the entire, around the entire, uh, the entire industry, which sucks. I mean, and then you got. <laughs> FC Insight accuses Three Arrows Capital of running a Madoff-style Ponzi scheme. Those are strong words. Those are strong. This is Thomas Lee, of course, Fundstrat, uh, his company. Three AC borrowed recklessly from just about every institutional lender in the business, a report from the industry says. Absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Basically saying, which I just alluded to, that they just were basically struggling performing poorly. Maybe their talent was actually raising money and lying uh, more so than it was actually trading and earning money. But basically, we're going out and taking loans from everybody that would give them one on false pretenses that they were a reliable firm. So basically, if you're lying and providing fake paperwork, then there's no way for these platforms to assess the counterparty risk. And now these guys are seemingly attempting to bury the entire industry. Strong words to say it's a made up style. Ponzi scheme, but if they were indeed just going out and raising more money to pay for debts that they had not disclosed and continually to do that from one lender to another, you can sadly sort of make that argument, which is crazy, crazy town out here. Investment firm Cypherpunk holding sell all of its Bitcoin and Ether. Ether, the publicly listed firm, has transitioned its treasury to cash amid increased market volatility, but it hasn't ruled out reinvesting in cryptocurrencies when the market settles down. Now, I read this and I was like, wow, man, selling all your crypto right now, clearly you don't think it's the bottom, maybe near the bottom uh, as a publicly listed fund. But then I dug in. I mean, they only this is 205 Ether, which is $227,000. I mean, they basically like sold a board ape and 214 Bitcoin, which is $4.7 million. Okay, I mean, I'm not saying that that's not a lot of money, but this is a story that's making headlines and these guys are basically trading smaller than a lot of retail traders who are exchanging millions. So I don't think this is as big of news as it seems. But Cypherpunk President and CEO Jeff Gao said the decision to dump all the firm's Bitcoin Ether holdings came on the heels of rising market volatility that has made holding asset tokens increasingly risko, risky for investors. You want to know the real irony? The name of the company is Cypherpunk Holdings H-O-D-L. They're traded under the ticker HODL and are the worst HODLers in history ever. 
We named ourselves HODL, but we're going to sell because of volatility. Oh, look, there's somebody here who is shilling some bullshit. Oh, it's about Tinder, though. That's cool. It says even you can fuck. That seems good. Some of you probably wouldn't be able to without that, you know? I mod I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. We usually have a moderator. I'm moderating right now. Do I feel like I'm moderating. I feel moderate. All right, let's continue on because we got more stories. My God. Speaking of more like kind of screwed up contagion and big names failing, CoinFlex says Roger Veer owns, owes it 47 million USDC as SPAT turns public. Crypto exchange is launching a recovery token because of debt owed by a high net worth customer. God, didn't we just talk about this yesterday? CoinFlex is going to just issue a token to cover the $47 million and offer 20% interest. Okay, I guess if you understand the risk of that, and that uh, you might get completely uh, tindered or whatever those people were, naked flexed, whatever the spammer was saying. Okay, I guess fine. I, I don't agree with it. But yesterday they said it was a unnamed individual who was extremely reliable that had caused their exchange basically to have to cut off withdrawals completely. Yikes. Over $47 million. Well, they came out. Mark Lamb, the CEO of CoinFlex, said, that dude is Roger Ver, Bitcoin Jesus, the Bitcoin cash guy, the fork guy. The We're all forked. Bitcoin is the cash is the real Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com guy. So first of all, like I... Presumably, he's a billionaire, so I don't think that like this is him having fun staying poor or anything like that. But he's now saying that CoinFlex owes him money and that the whole story is backwards. And CoinFlex saying that the, that he has consistently always topped up his margin, basically has a heavy leverage long that uh, seemingly is massively underwater, maybe on Bitcoin Cash. Don't know. Uh, and that this time he's just saying, nah, dude, I'm not going to top up. Uh... Take a take a hike, right? I mean, these stories are crazy. What the hell is going on, man? First of all, if you have as much money as some of these guys do, what are you doing? Like being heavily leveraged. It's so dumb. Leverage is going to go down as the story of this year, man. Leverage is going to be the thing that wrecked us, caused this whole crypto winter, this entire thing. I mean, it's leverage that wrecked three hours capital. They had so much money. Re leverage wrecking CoinFlex because... They didn't assess the counterparty risk of Roger Ver, if that is true, correctly. Oh, we just, he, he always topped up his margin in the past. So it's fine. Yeah, not great. Not great. I mean, it seems that uh, everybody in crypto is basically a degenerate gambler and it's all irresponsible. And we're all unfortunately paying the price for it. And meanwhile, listen, I mean, we have all these exchanges that are sort of reducing their uh, their their employees. Well, OK, Huobi was going down yesterday. BitGet was going up. Coinbase and Gemini going down. Well, OKX is going to go up 30 percent, mostly because they are international and they're servicing clients all over the world. So they're continuing to expand and higher staff, but it's very clear they want to have 5,000 employees. So it's very clear that not everybody is suffering here. And a lot of people are viewing this bear market as an opportunity to build, build. Another wealthy DJ, yeah. How's Voyager going? Keck, yeah, I told you guys, uh, it's not, it's right now. Oh my God, he's back with cheap sex. Just fuck girls, cheap sex dating. I probably shouldn't read that out loud. Um. Yeah, man. I listen. I, I've been using Voyager since the day that they started, and currently I can withdraw ten thousand dollars a day like everyone else. How it is? I have no idea what USDC is, so I cannot look at it. I don't know. Um, who wants cheap sex? Uh, that apparently a lot of people in the chat because they're targeting our chat. They know you guys. These are the questions that matter. Free is better than cheap, and we need to know the details. Guess you could dig in though and see. Like it's right there. If you wanted to see it, you could. You could see. I don't know though. how cheap, $1 cheap, or how cheap, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I mean, it's better than expensive, I guess. Although maybe expensive is maybe you get what you pay for in the uh, crypto sex, Tinder, whatever the hell that is, world. Dude, I have no idea what's going on right now. I got to get my screens like better. I don't really like what I got going on here. It's better. Feels like I'm like not reading in the right direction. I'm looking all over the place. I don't know, man. I'm not used to my new setup yet. 
feels weird. Feels weird. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Also feel like I'm not, I'm like less tall today. It's weird, man. I don't know. Weird stuff. Weird things are afoot at the Circle K today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have another epic roundtable. I was off last week. We'll announce the guest tomorrow. So you guys can check that out. What's a Z, John? I don't know. Z rhymes with B. So that's cool. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys at the moment. I hope that you have a wonderful and stupendous day. And that, I don't know, Bitcoin gets higher than 20,000 eventually because that would be super sweet. Thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. That's dope.